Hey folks, before we get started, I want to remind you that I'll be heading over to Europe this spring, so if you're in or near these cities, come on out. I'll be in London, England on Monday, April 16th, Stockholm, Sweden on Thursday, April 19th, Oslo, Norway on Sunday, April 22nd, Amsterdam in the Netherlands on Monday, April 23rd, and Dublin, Ireland on Thursday, April 26th. Go to WTFPod.com and check out the tour page to get venue and ticket information. Yes, that is a limited tour. It is a uh, a few parts of the world tour. Uh, it is uh, doing a few dates in countries I want to see, in cities I want to spend time with. So I'll do some comedy while I'm there because there's people there that have not seen me. Right? All over the world. The people that haven't seen me far outnumber the people that have seen me. So I'll be there. All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fucksters? What's happening? I am Mark Marin. This is my podcast, WTF. Welcome to it. Full show today. Couple of guests. Two guests. We've got Cameron Esposito stopping in for a, a shorty, a short chat. And then uh, Macaulay Calkin is here. Macaulay Calkin. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but, uh, you know, Macaulay Calkin is... Macaulay Culkin, and you know when somebody says, you know, you know Macaulay Culkin wants to come on the show, I'm like, what's that kid been up to? What's he doing? Where, where's he been? What does that life look like? Let's see if he uh, he'll talk about it. So I talked to Macaulay Culkin. I, I like to say his name apparently. Cameron Diaz, Cameron Diaz, Cameron Esposito. Uh, has got some stuff going on. I, I I like her. I like her comedy. I like her. Uh, she's she was on my show. Marin, I, she's a she's a friend of the show. Nice to have her back. What's happening? Where are we at? I apologize if you hear a slight machine noise in the back. I'll try to talk over it. I will I will try to do that for you. You see that there's shit going down here. There there's stuff going on. There the there's a guy out there. He's blasting away at the exterior of my house, chipping away at the the at the. Uh, what do you call it at the stucco? Gonna redo some stuff out there, get that painted up inside the house. The floors are done. New moldings happening. It's all painted and nice and white. And I do have that feeling like, what am I doing? Why am I going? What, what? But I'm still out here in the garage and I did make the mistake of, uh, of cutting my internet. I cut my cables so we could pull the cables out through the wall so we could do the work on the wall, thinking, like, I don't need this anymore. Thinking that the cable had nothing to do with my internet, and then realizing on the way over here today that I get the the internet from the cable company, and I cut it. I, cu- I literally cut the cord, people. Um, I can't I can't Google. I can't tweet. I can't uh, wiki. I can't do anything. I'm going old school. Got to make notes. I'm reading this off my phone. I'm reading the ad copy off my phone. I was surprised that I actually, I, I printed stuff off of my phone without the Wi-Fi. I learned new things right in time. Yeah, yeah, you can still function. I'm still connected. But, uh, so look, today is, what day is it? It's Monday. And the truth of the matter is, I don't know what happened yesterday because I'm recording this before I go to the SAG Awards. Uh, there's a couple things I, I want to tell you. Uh, I'm excited. I'm very grateful to be uh, nominated by my fellow actors and actresses. Uh, and uh, I don't uh, I don't know what my chances are. I certainly don't anticipate winning. I do want to tell everyone uh, that I'm going to be wearing the exact same thing that I wore at the Critics' Choice Awards. So if there's anyone out there thinking that I would not do that or that wasn't a smart thing, if that's what you're focusing on, like uh, why didn't Marin just not wear the vest with the suit? Because I'll tell you why. I, I spent a lot of money on that suit, and I'm going to wear every piece, and I'm going to wear the white shirt and the black tie. I don't want any fucking guff. That's what I'm wearing. It's not like anyone's na- making notes. It's not like i got to walk the red carpet, and people are going to be like, why isn't Mark Maron wearing a different dress? That's the only way I would not wear the suit, actually, is if, is if I, I was wearing a dress, and I'm just not that bold. I'm not that bold, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. Maybe next year I'll wear a dress. So basically, so, so basically what I'm saying is that I don't know what went down yesterday because I'm recording this the day before yesterday. So I will, uh, I will, I'll, I'll walk you through it, uh, when I come back on, uh, on Thursday and, and tell you what happened. 
If everything works out, well, I'll still be here Thursday. I'll still be here Thursday. Maybe I'll have a story to tell. We'll see. I don't want to keep going here uh, too long because I do have a full show. And uh, I don't know. The noise is kind of bothering me in the background. And uh, also... Maybe I, I'm gonna have to rehook up that Wi-Fi. Is there waiting now? Do, can I just go to Radio Shack and get the thing for the? You know, I cut off the top of the coaxial cable, but I think I can just get the top of a coaxial cable at Radio Shack and then hook it back up through the window. Yeah, maybe I maybe I'll get on that. Maybe that's my job. I find myself focusing on uh, mundane uh, kind of uh, not repetitive things, but things that'll cataloging and and fixing small things. Over at the new house, I I uh, went through all my all my seven inch records, and I don't even play seven inch records. I'm not sure where they all came from, but I decided it was time to to go through them for an hour or so, so I don't think about the darkness. You know what I'm saying, folks? The darkness. A lot to be grateful for, uh, right alongside with a lot to be terrified of. We're sponsored today by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. I've been telling you about Casper for years, but now Casper has three different mattress models. The original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential. And while you'll be able to figure out which one is right for you, all the Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Not to mention the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. And yes, all the Casper mattresses are still delivered right to your door in the amazing Casper box. What's amazing about it? It has no business holding a mattress, that's what, but it does. And you get to pop that mattress out of there like a magic trick. It just breathes life into itself. I've gotten several Caspers at this point for my bedroom and then for guest rooms, and it's always a trip when the box arrives. There's free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada, and Casper always has a 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. You get to try it out and see if you like it. And if not, you send it right back. Start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash WTF and using WTF at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's casper.com slash WTF. Offer code WTF for $50 off your mattress purchase. Okay? All right. Let's ease into uh, Cameron Esposito now. She's got a new stand-up record. It's called Back to Back. It's a double album featuring a set from Cameron and her wife, Rhea Butcher. You can also check out her podcast, Query, with Cameron Esposito. And hear her on episode 575 of WTF. Get that on Howl or Stitcher Premium. And she's also featured extensively in our book, Waiting for the Punch, Words to Live By from the WTF podcast. And she's back here with me now in the garage. Please, Welcome. What am I doing? I'm setting it up like a television show. This is me and Cameron Esposito chatting here in the last days of the garage at the Cat Ranch. Did you buy a house? Not yet. We're looking right now. Do you have kids yet? No. Are you going to? I hope so. Yeah. It's like a real race right now, you know? I mean, you don't know. You have no, this is nothing to do with your life. But it's a real race, cause I'm trying to figure out like, age how, wise? Well, just how, how stable do you have to, oh, you know how our right. job, yeah, is really, sure. Don't know if you're gonna have any money. There's just a, it's just turns out <laughs> ebbs and flows. Sure. And I don't know how you're supposed to make decisions that require stability. I, you know, I, you know, it seems that a lot of people don't even consider it. They just have the kid. What is... Well, so, okay. Yeah. Those people yeah. probably are straight people who can just, like, magically accidentally make a kid. Not that oh, all straight right. people... Oh, that's right. It takes a little more effort. Not that all straight people can, but when you yeah. are in the position where you have to plan it... <laughs> right. Then I think you get stressed out about trying to figure out the perfect time. Yeah, man, because, like, I mean, there seems to be many level of planning. Like, where are we going to get the stuff... Who's going to carry it? Or is that uh, even how I'm going right. to do it? Are we like, going to get an already made one? Yeah, and because there's a lot of those, and yeah. they need, but th- that's expensive too. Yeah, and then also just like, who do you even ask? You know, there's the initial like. Sure. Imagine if today you had to it's go. It's like find that episode we did. Yeah, well, it's yeah. really intense. Yeah, oh I'm in God. that zone. Oh, I'm really? in the zone so, of the episode of your television. So show did, you yeah. guys are talking about it. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it for a couple of years. Uh-huh. I think when you're a woman in your 30s, yeah, it's not even yeah. an option to not think about it because other people bring it up all the time. And yeah, then you have to think about it. You gotta make a decision. 
you have to make a decision. And I know I want to have kids, but, you know, there's also, think about the number of women that yeah. do our job that, like, just didn't have kids. It's because, like, your 30s is also... Yeah, that's when you're making, doing your thing. It's the whole thing. Yeah. You're you're figuring it out. Yeah. You're going from, like, feature, yeah. you know, working the road to whatever you're going to be. Whatever, like, yeah. like that, that 30 to 40 range sure. is, like... The moment. It's yeah. the moment. And like I talked to Segura yesterday and he, he and Christina have a two year old and they're both on the road and they alternate. Like they plan, I guess if one's out, the other one's home and that kind of deal. Yeah. I know. I feel like I, so I've, I toured Rhea and I, we went on a bus tour this fall, which was our, a big thing for us. How many dates? Um, we did. 17 in the bus and we, th- we flew for four more. So we did like 21 altogether. You rented a bus? Yeah, to do 17 dates. Yeah. Well, how, why'd you need a bus? Uh, it was awesome. We did it so fast. Have you ever, have you ever been in a bus? Like a big a bus? Tour? A tour bus? Yeah, it was like a rock star tour bus. Well, how many people were on your tour, on the show? <laughs> it was Rhea and I, and yeah. also our tour manager. On the whole bus? Yep. Oh, you just, and we had a driver. Did you record it? Uh, yeah, it's an album that was just number one on iTunes for a couple, for a couple. Oh, weeks. this is, uh, this is your new album. Yeah, that's called Back to Back. It's yeah. from that tour. So, you know, I felt like, as a comic, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, transition into more of a, I don't know, an appointment. Uh-huh. As opposed to, like, I don't play clubs anymore. I play theaters. Right. You, you play theaters. Yeah. You play bigger theaters than I do. I don't know. Eh, probably. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Um, And so I'm, you know, in that transitional mode, right. too, which also is just, like, a different thing because you just don't know what's going to happen next so even like if it was about money is that what you're talking about i I mean mean, it's money but it's also like what's the worst that could happen that people stop coming no (laughs) i'm trying to figure out like is this the time that i need to knuckle down and make all the shit happen like if i was just going out every weekend and playing a club in a static way yeah um at least you can kind of plan around that but like right right now Right, when you do a theater tour, it's like you, you know, you got all these dates to knock out. And, it's like nuts. And then, and then you got to build the next hour. Yeah, you're feed in, the monster. Yeah, I'm shooting for a whole. I'm trying to get real famous and big, Mark. Yeah, I, trying I, to get I, real, I hear you. Trying to get real big and famous. How's that going? I think it's going okay. So this, oh, so is this? But it's just your. Is it both of you on the record or just you? We did this thing where the two of us perform together up top, right. and then I. And then she does a half hour, and then I do a half hour. So right. it's like 90 minutes, but split into three different sections. And that's what's on the record. That's what's on the record, That's yeah. great. And how did that go? Did it work? It was awesome. Oh, great. It really was. I think we're doing something that... Um, or not I think. We're doing something that doesn't really exist, which is like when we're on stage performing together, talking about both sides of a relationship, uh-huh. Uh-huh. you know, how much of our stuff is talking about a relationship, but we don't often get to hear, like, right. the other person doesn't usually come out and be like, and actually, go yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> right, their side of it. So it's pretty cool. No, that's great. And I'm, like, yeah. into it. I think yeah. it's fun because yeah. also it just keeps stand-up not stale. Yeah. And are you the straight man? <laughs> actually, actually, no. Oh, really? There really is a... Re- I'm, like, the, I'm uh-huh. like the loon or whatever. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh-huh. I'm like the dreamer, and then Rhea's the straight man, really. <laughs> yep. That's great. It's fun as fuck. What happened to the CISO show? What happens to that thing? Where you, like, I talk to people who are like, yeah. I had someone on the show who had a show, uh, a special coming, uh, Brent Weinbach. Yep. Weinbach. He was like, you know, I don't know if it's coming out. Like, we were talking about, you know, before it was supposed to, yes. to happen, and the, the whole thing, what did it all go under? Is it still on? Or No, it doesn't exist. Went away. There is there is no streaming platform currently that exists that's called CISO. So you're, how many done. episodes of your show were on there? So we had a first season that now no longer exists anywhere, except I think the pilot might still be on YouTube, but I have to check because I think many that episodes? came out too. Six the first season, then we made an eight episode second season that um never got posted. Just isn't it just doesn't exist anywhere. And we tried to you know, we don't own the thing. Right. We made the thing. It took two years of our lives. Um, we don't own the thing. We can't put it anywhere. And then the people that are now involved with like trying to sell it or place it yeah. are not the executives that I would have known. It's like it's it's now back to kind of like the corporate overlords. It's it's like it has you nothing mean the to do with people that own CISO. 
Which is NBC Universal. So it's like, oh, that's NBC. it's like okay. whoever is the so now it's NBC business property. development guy that works at NBC Universal that you and I would never meet because we're on the creative side. Sure. We would meet like the creative execs. Those so it, people all have different jobs now. But they own it. They own it. And I don't know that it will ever go anywhere. So essentially it's kind of like I went to grad school, <laughs> learned how to be a showrunner and learned how to make a show. Yeah. Uh, and the show doesn't exist. Well, I mean, have you tried to buy it back? Do you have um? Do you have a couple? Do you have, <laughs> what? Do you have some? Do you, how many millions of dollars can you spend on is your, it, is it that much? Yeah, yeah. I can't buy it back. I don't have the. I don't have that. Like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to buy a kid. I know. I know. You know. But do, but did you have like? Did you have your agent have these conversations of trying to? Oh yeah. I mean, this is all wrestle it there away. There are many people involved in this. Teams of people working for me and oh. our production company, Comedy Bang Bang, and right. like there, it's and there also isn't really like I don't even know that that there's a fault here. I mean, it's literally no, it's just, just it's like just paperwork. It's, it's just, just pa- of, exactly that's the problem. They don't want to do, and they don't care if they don't do anything with it because it's because it's gone to the stage of paperwork. So yeah. once something's in the stage of paperwork, it's just literally like okay, so we can actually afford to just drop that amount of money in the trash. Right. That's what this made me realize is yeah. how much like mega conglomerate corporations, right. how much they actually have, that mm-hmm. they can just be like, you know, it's kind of more worth it to us to never right. yeah, put like, it anywhere. Yeah, and why bother selling it? That's going to take more paperwork and manpower. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, unless someone's really going to step up with some big bread. And And people did. I mean, we had a lot of interest. It was a weird, this has been a very weird experience. Well, what really, do you mean what happened? You had people, you guys sought out people who No, would, there was like a save the... What I did was I just posted our stats for yeah, the second season because right. we were really deliberate about our hiring. So we had an all-female writer's room for two seasons and we had a 51% out queer cast. So yeah. the actors that were playing the roles were actually queer folks. Yeah. I believe it's the biggest... At the time, it was like the yeah. biggest cast of out queer actors to ever exist in a single season of television i just posted some of that stuff yeah um and it kind of went viral and like vanity fair wrote about it and you know huge yeah publications and then because of that we got some calls but it just didn't it just wasn't the right thing you know you take it personally um i don't take it personally that is actually my takeaway is how impersonal it can be Right. Because for me, that show was really personal. You right. worked on it with my wife, and it was based on our real relationship. Yeah. And the people that we worked with were so personal with us. It was really my first experience of like, oh, this is a, you know, this is the stock, the stock market. Like, people invest in <laughs> yeah. shows because right. they want that to pay off, because they want, you know, whoever to advertise on the show. Like, this is... Yeah, it's all about money. It's not about our little dreams. Our little dreams are <laughs> floating on the back of something much bigger. Oh yeah, yeah. They're just you know floating on the back. That's yeah, that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> or or just completely shit out yeah. by something much bigger. Oh yeah, they don't care. And I think that part of that was it doesn't care. I shouldn't say they. It. The yes, thing. that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Is that I don't actually think there's anything sinister involved here. Right. And I don't know if that and that doesn't. It's not like I like sleep well going, oh, it wasn't sinister. I just, I go, oh, shit, it wasn't sinister. Well, then what does that mean about our in- industry? That if it can't even be personal enough to be sinister, like, would it, would, would it be better if it was? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you just got, it's just stuck is the problem, the bigger problem, because it seems like there would easily be an outlet for it. You just can't get it free, and that sucks because it's your work, but you sign away that right, and you just think it's going to, you know, be okay, or you don't think it all the way through, or whatever, you don't have a choice. So now something like this happens, and you're like, it's like party views being held hostage, not for sinister reasons, for bottom line reasons, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And you know what you do is uh, you go out on the road and you tour, and you actually meet people that watch the first season. Um, I mean, that's what Rhea and I did. We when I When we found out about... This we were gonna go. The fall tour that we were supposed to go on was actually like a promotional tour, which was part of the reason for the bus. It was gonna be wrapped. Did they at with, least like, take keep my paying for the bus? Like um, were you able? To- <laughs> I can't <laughs> comment on that. Uh, no, we paid for the bus. Yeah, we paid for the bus um, because it was already 
the dates were already tied to, you can travel faster in a bus than you can on a plane because you fly overnight. Sure. So, like, you get done with the show, you go to yeah, sleep, right. and then... Right, you're at the next place. You're at the next place the next morning. So, we were kind of tied to it being on a bus, and so right. we just decided, like, all right, well, if that's the case, then, like... Keep the bus. Let's just be... <laughs> Let's just let that be rad, yeah. you know? Like, let's just yeah. make a bunch of merch and toss it in the back of the bus and do this big thing. Like, let's do it up. And you have fun. It was our first time being on tour uh, since the awfulness of our president. I don't know if you've been out lately. Yeah, sure, yeah. It was incredible. People waited. We would have these huge meet and greets. Yeah. And people would wait for like an hour and a half to talk to us. Yeah. And I think part of it is just like... Community. Yeah. Speaking. How important that is right now. Yeah. People just feeling like, right. oh my God, can I... Right. Can I just shake somebody's hand? Is yeah, there yeah. anybody that will give me a hug? Like, you know, and yeah. um, it was really amazing. And gratitude that you're speaking that. that truth, you know, or that representing, you know, it means a lot now. Yeah, it was a lot people, of listening too. A lot of people yeah. wanted to talk about their stories, which is cool. I mean, I... It's cool. It's also, it also feels like way too much responsibility. Uh. Not in a, I'm not like, I wouldn't, I wasn't shutting anybody down, but it, it is wild when you get to the point where people are talking to you about their personal lives. Especially on a line. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, number one, especially in a line. Um, yeah. but also number two, because you're just like trying so hard to like be there for that person, but you just performed. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's and a, your brain is not working. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see there's hundreds of pictures out of me with strangers looking exhausted. <laughs> Like yeah. I can't. I, I I always think I'm pulling it off, but when I I look at <laughs> if I see something a a picture of me, someone tweets, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so, like exhausted. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's it's important. You're right. Yeah, community is important, and people feeling like you know represented and strong, and 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 that you know people are because a lot of people are isolated. You know, they come out from wherever they are, whatever their family situation is, whatever little town they live in. And just to, you know, to hear their truth spoken or something they relate to, it's a big deal. Especially queer folks yeah. who I think have had to spend the last year hearing. We, we've had to hear about our community from outsiders in a way that has really sucked over the last year. Either people that are on the far left being like, don't worry about it. I swear this won't be that bad for you. Like me, I can sit out voting in this election because my rights aren't really on the line, but your rights aren't on the line either. You know, right. like we had to hear that. And yeah. then we also had to hear um, people on the far right basically acting as if we only exist in large cities and yeah. are some like phenomenon of Los Angeles and right. West Hollywood specifically. And right. what I've learned traveling the country for the last 15 years is that we are in literally every state and in every city and in rural areas. And people are just trying to get by and not have their apartments taken away because the, uh, their girlfriend moves in with them or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're just trying to literally pee. Right. In the bathroom. Yeah. That is at the yeah. truck stop or right. wherever the fuck they are. Right. And, um. It's scary. It's just such a huge step backward in terms of the way my community's spoken about yeah. in the last year. Either people talking about it like, you already got marriage. Yeah, what, what else do you need? Yeah, isn't that enough? Aren't you guys good now? And and it's like, well, uh, black trans women are being like murdered on the street. So we would also like for that to not happen. If you wouldn't mind including that with marriage, <laughs> stop uh, killing. Yeah, us. if you could just like stop killing us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool. It's horrible. Um, yeah. So what are you doing? You know, uh, in do you do you deal with this stuff on the podcast? Oh yeah. Well, that this is part of the reason I started this new podcast that's called Query. Yeah. Um Actually, I mean, I'll blow I'll blow like a little smoke at you. Okay. You know, I think what this show did was allow people into in-group conversations mm-hmm. between comics. You've heard that a million times. It's so cool for people to just be able to like hear two comics talk to each other without explaining right. the words and like you go up and you look up yeah, do a little homework you know, if you have to. Exactly. <laughs> like, you figure out where this club is yeah, or yeah. what this booker is or whatever it is. That's, like, what caught fire about this was the idea that on a podcast, there is no explanation. Right. 
And I feel like that hasn't really existed for the queer community. Um, so often, like when we're interviewed, it, the, the questions are like, so when did you come out? And then how did your parents take it? And going from when did you come out to how does your parents, how did your parents take it? It immediately erases the queer person in that story. Like, okay, when did you come out? How was that for you? Uh huh. How had you felt prior to that? How were you treated as a kid? Yeah. What do you identify as? Mm-hmm. Like, I think those conversations, we haven't even had the chance to be asked, and it's because a lot of times, I mean, just by the numbers, straight people are doing the interviews. And so, so they're coming saying, at it like, I identify with your parent. I identify, I'm a straight person. Right. I identify with your straight parent. Right. As opposed to, I'm a queer person. Um, you know, just tell me about, what your life is like on a daily basis. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I see that. It's, it, yeah, it's difficult. I was having a conversation about this, about empathy, that sometimes empathy is difficult for people who have no, whose experience is completely different yes. than the other person. I, yes, and I think empathy is also different from, like, in-group conversation. Oh, absolutely. Because I think that a lot of people have a lot of empathy. But yeah, but I think that's right. I think there's a lot of straight people that talk to queer people that, you know, are not, they're not meaning to detach or erase. Yeah, of they're course. Just, they're just, their curiosity is limited to what their parameters of experience are. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I would say also, you know, like something that I heard again and again on this last tour, um, a lot of people that come to see Rhea and, or I will say, this is the first time I've ever seen a stand-up show. Because right. I specifically haven't gone because I look a little unusual and I'm afraid of that thing where a comic will pick on me. Right. Um, and, you know, you and I know, first of all, that like not all comics stand up on stage and like point out the weirdos yeah. in the audience, but yeah. just the idea that like you're carrying that around with you. Right. That you would remove your access to art. And here in the, on the comedy side of things, we assume like, oh, these are the great names and they're universally accepted as speaking to all people. Yeah. No, fuck, they're not. Yeah. There are people who don't go to those shows because they're scared to be in that audience. Yeah. And like, we don't. We don't shift our lens. Right. It is, I will say, mm. are you funny right now? Pretty funny. Are you? I'm like having a hard time being funny. I'm pretty funny, but like I'm also, I'm not being that specific. Huh. Like I'm reacting to things and then I'm kind of going away from them, you know, in my process and then coming back. on. I'm not saying like, what about this? <laughs> problem. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to sort of subvert it into a bigger conversation or or uh, something that doesn't isn't as like, you know, like we're if I'm going to say we're fucked, then I got to say what I do when I feel that way and where it takes me and you know what I mean? Like I try to make it relatable as a try as opposed to pontificate or or be righteous about things. Well, maybe that's the part that I'm having a hard time with, honestly. I don't the, think there's the anything wrong with it. Part. It's just it's tricky to make it funny. It is tricky to make it funny. I feel pretty betrayed. By? Uh, like, you know, whatever it was, 80% of white voters or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. I feel pretty betrayed um, by, like, my own skin, yeah. by, like, whiteness right now and how fucking stupid whiteness is, mm-hmm. how far we will apparently go to... To save it? <laughs> to, so, wait, was it really at risk uh, to begin with? Yeah. Well, Mark, like, I mean, some other people wanted to own like 3% of the 100% that white people have owned in this country. And so, as you know, that was a terrible idea. Yeah. And white people had to fight for it. Yeah, so it was uh, too much. Too Way much. Too much. Yeah, yeah know, raci- I don't know. Racism, scary shit. And, uh, you know, and yeah, there, it's, it's hard to deliberate, you know, where to come from. But but ultimately, if you start with you, you know breakfast, and, right, and you kind of move out from there, <laughs> where you know just your own life, you yeah. know, like these struggles, like it's very easy, I think, sometimes to to isolate things you want to talk about, but but it, that's different than you know how do I talk about this, and I'm not sure that 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 part, you know, asking that question publicly, uh, is not a bad place to start. You know, like I'm struggling with how I talk about this because I feel this way. And there's a humility to that. And then like the humor that comes out of that is better than 
thinking you have it figured out or beating yourself up or saying, um, you know, we're all bad. I don't know. You know, I, I got away from that, you know, because I couldn't, couldn't handle the stridency of it. Yeah. I think you're totally right. I also have the benefit of, I mean, just me being on stage is yeah. inherently political. So like, That's if right. I talk about my personal life, it's yeah. already kind of creating space and rocking the boat. But it's always, I think it's always better to come from there, don't you? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. and I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, my view on it has always been that I share a lot about my personal life. I yeah. mean, there's like tons that I don't share. Right. There are absolutely many things that are reserved. Yeah. For just me or That's for just good. me and my wife or yeah. for my, you know, my family. Yeah. Um, but I've always shared a lot of my personal life because I don't actually see that. Yeah. Out there in the sure. comedy world that yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, you talk so much about your personal life. Yeah. It's boring. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I just think, um, the door that was opened with, by like, comics that worked, that were your peers. Yeah. And that are your peers. Yeah. Toward getting more and more personal. Like, I yeah. still didn't see a ton of, there aren't a ton of women and there aren't a ton of gay women. That's right. Yeah. And also, like, but, you know, like, I think I, I think what I'm hearing you say is that it's challenging now when things are as scary and, you know, seemingly a little hopeless. I uh, think- that, you know, to get to that, to to get up there and be like, okay, I'm going to be funny for you now. <laughs> also mad. 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 That's yeah. actually what I'm really struggling with the most. Yeah. I mean, it's working. It's, you know, I had a great time on tour because I think people wanted to see that a little bit. Of course. Um, but, you know, also, it's su- it, the thing that sucks about it or that's hard about it is when you're a woman and you yell. Yeah. That's a fucking problem. <laughs> But when you're a woman right now and you're mad, the only thing you want to do is yell. Yeah. So it's real fucking catch-22. Yeah. You know, I feel like... You can yell. You're allowed. <laughs> Thank you for the permission. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been yelling for years. I'm not going to stop yelling. But Jesus, I can't believe... I've never been this mad. I've, ne- I've like never been this I mad. I don't think a lot of people have ever been this mad and this scared simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like exhausting. Like, you know, I've got my own sort of persecution fantasies, but there's very real persecution going on policy wise and, and culturally in a very real way for a lot of people that were making some progress. That is interesting because comedy, stand up specifically, is often a response to persecution. Right? Like that's where it comes from. Sure. From our childhoods yeah. feeling persecuted. And Alienated. The like the glimmer yeah. of hope that I have is that since there is since there are on, on a daily basis there are so many real examples of persecution yeah. that people that fall in those communities will like rise to the top in a way that we didn't mm-hmm. before. I mean, I've I've had a pretty successful career. It's not like I'm, I'm for where I'm at. I'm not like bummed. I'm just yeah. saying that I think it's great if what this leads. It, like if black women get talk shows right, right now, right. that is great. If, <laughs> that makes me happy. Right. This week, if that's a more voices being heard. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's a good place to to wrap it up. Yeah, just on black women getting talk shows. They, and I'm 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 uh, behind that 100. <laughs> percent Thanks for talking. Yeah, Mark. Okay, so that was me and Cameron Esposito chatting here in the garage. Uh, coming up shortly. Is, uh, Macaulay Culkin. I'm sorry. This transition is, is, has been a bit difficult for me. And, uh, like I, I, I don't, I know, I know there's just a lot of commotion going on outside. There's a machine running, but this is not going to be how it's going to be. Just bear with me, uh, another, another week or two, another episode or two, you know? I don't even know how much you can hear that noise, but like I'm trying not to fester on it, but, uh, Excuse me. We'll just keep moving. We'll keep moving on. We'll keep moving through. It's not going to be this way on Thursday. I, I don't even know how much you can hear it, but there's a little bit of chaos here at the house, folks. That, that's that's all I'm saying. But that was Cameron Esposito. You can get her recent stand-up record back to back. You can you can get that where you get your CDs and records. Uh, also listen to Query with Cameron Esposito. And uh, yeah. 
It was nice to see her. So, folks, listen, I know what happens by this point in January. You made some resolutions at the beginning of the year, but around this time, you start to slip. And then by February, you just give up. Well, here's a resolution you can actually keep all year. Add Stamps.com to your business and save a ton of time and money. Stamps.com brings all the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Simply create your Stamps.com account online in minutes. Print official U.S. postage for any letter or package any class of mail and let your mail carry pick it up. No leaving your home office, no more hassle. Stamps.com even sends you a digital scale that automatically calculates exact postage. And they have postage discounts that you can't get at the post office. Plus, it's a fraction of the cost of those super expensive postage meters. I've never had a postage meter, thankfully, and that's because I've always used Stamps.com pretty much from the start of this business, folks. And right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus postage, and a digital scale. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the home page, and type in WTF. That's Stamps.com. Enter WTF at the top of the home page. Woo! So, as I said earlier, when I got the opportunity to speak to Macaulay Culkin, I realized that he doesn't go out and speak much. We all know who Macaulay Culkin is, and he is one of those people that you kind of think to yourself well what's going on with that guy where where's he been what's he what's he doing what how did how did life end up for macaulay culkin well it ended up all right and he's got a new podcast called bunny ears you can get it wherever you get podcasts and uh i you know i just i i went into it with an open mind and it was nice to see him uh so this is me uh, talking to macaulay culkin <laughs> So what did you tell me to call you? Mac. Mac. Yeah, it, it's one syllable. It's a Mac. lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that what is that how it goes? Mac. Have you been Mac the whole life? Yep. Mac. Yep. It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, you know, kind of like both a nickname and my name really. You know, yeah, at this yeah. Point. yeah, yeah. So what, now what what have you been doing? Where have you been living? What's go, what's <laughs> going on? Do you live in New York? Do you live in Paris? Where do you live? Yeah, I've been living in Paris and New York. I've been in New York a little bit more. Uh, but what's uh, uh, what goes on in Paris? You just moved there out of nowhere. Well, I was going there for a little while, and uh, it was one of those things where people would. I thought nobody recognized me. Yeah. And it, what it was was no, we recognize you. We just don't care. Oh yeah, and that's like, better. Where, Is that where better? Have you, where have you people been my whole life? <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I get all the benefits. Yeah, like You yeah. know, and like you know, a lot less of like you know, yeah, like you know, the negatives. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I have a nice like you know group of friends out there, and they always ask, always ask me. Um, Two questions. Yeah. When are you going to learn French and when are you going to move out here? Yeah. And so during one of my trips, they said, when are you going to move out here? And I said, how's next week? Yeah. And so I just left my baggage there, went home, settled some affairs for a week. And yeah. I've been living in Paris for like the last like four years. Four years? Yeah. And my French is still terrible. So, <laughs> so when when and you had the, you still have your place in New York? Yes, I do. Yeah, I uh, I, I bought I bought in the nineties. So oh, that's they, great. Yeah, it's nice to to know that you own a little property if the it shit is, goes down. It, it is my uh, insurance policy. Let's right. Just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I can always I you know I I have you know money tied up in real estate. So why Paris, way. man? I mean, like what 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 drew you? Well, you know the the food sucks, the wine's terrible, and the women are ugly. Uh, but otherwise, right. sure. <laughs> I mean, of course, it's like I, I, I live well out there. Honestly, I've never shit better in my life. Like, yeah. you know, out then there, like, my bowels enjoy being out there really? kind of thing. Oh, yeah. No, you, you eat well. Like, yeah. it, it, everything spoils in a day or two. Uh, because it's all so fresh and yeah, good. Exactly. I exactly. noticed that. Yeah. It, it's like everything feels local in a way. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, like you feel like you're eating real vegetables. Well, it's a bakery. Real cheeses. Exactly. A boulangerie, yeah. a, a bakery out there. Can't call itself a boulangerie, a bakery, unless they bake their own uh, baguettes from scratch so it's a every food single thing. day. You went there for the food. Well, I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, like I said, it's a part of it. It's a part of it. Did you, know? did you have a romantic idea of what Paris was? I mean, or is there, like, you don't speak French, so you, are you spending most of your time with expats or... Uh, I, I do find a lot of expats, like, uh, at, uh, cafes and yeah. things like that. You know, in the same way that if a French person was in LA sure. yeah. and they hear someone speaking French two yeah. tables over, right. like, their ears will, their, you know, their ears will just sure. like ping. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I can go talk to that guy. Yeah, exactly. Like, invite them over to your table and, yeah. you know, uh, you know, offer them a glass of wine or, you know, some coffee or sure. something like that. So I do find that. And, know. and, but did you go, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is like, did, did you retire there? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 yeah, I've been, re- you know, I've been, a, 
I'm yeah, I'm a thirty something retired person, pretty much. Yes, like you know exactly. Like walking around with a baguette tucked under my arm, like you know, and living the romantic life. Right. But also when I was you know going around Europe, I, I you know did one of those things where you go around for months and months and months. Oh, you did that? And yeah, yeah, for like a good like half a year. And uh, uh, I didn't want to be that guy who came back and said Paris is great, blah 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 blah. Right. Paris is beautiful, and I became that guy. Yeah. Like, I couldn't help it. Like, yeah. I, I I did really enjoy it. it. You know, it worked to my sensibilities. Sure. You know, they, they eat light breakfasts. I know, it's a food know, thing. And then, yeah, and then, like, you know, <laughs> uh, and so, like, you know, like, it, like so that kind of lifestyle. Uh, um, and what do you do during the day? Do you, what do you read a book? What do you do? Yeah. You know, I, I write, I paint. I you s- paint? I sleep, I drink. Yes, I paint. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've shown. <laughs> yeah? And, uh, uh, yeah. And abstract, I, figurative, what do you do? Uh, a little more abstracty kind of yeah. stuff, but also, yeah, like, you know, uh, uh, I've been playing a lot with, like, uh, some, like, real kind of, like, still life or some figurative kind of, like, charcoals and everything like that. After, oh, yeah? la- after the last shootings out there in Paris, uh, uh, there was a, a curfew, so you couldn't leave your house kind of thing. Uh-huh. And so all I did was just play with charcoals until I went insane. Because I normally don't leave my house, but the fact that I couldn't leave my house drove me insane. Drove me to charcoal. <laughs> drove me to charcoal, exactly. Do you have a studio? Do you, or is your place big it's, enough? It, to... Yeah, I, 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 have a, I have a space in my apartment kind of thing. Like, yeah? Yeah, yeah I, I made sure I had a... Uh, um, I got a two-bedroom because I like kind of being, you know, I love the Gertrude Stein of Paris, sure, you know, which sure. is, re, you know, redundant. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you yeah, know, I like hosting a lot of my, like, you know... I have friends in bands and things like that that are always touring, so I like to host. I want oh, to yeah. try on that, but also I, I have I have studio space. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got your canvases on the easel. Yep, pretty much. Yep, yep. That's a, that's exactly what it is. It, it looks really really cute, and there's also just stains all over the floor and everything yeah, like that sure. from like the bottom of my feet. It's it's, not, yeah. it's very romantical. It really is. It's, it sounds like you're doing the whole thing. Yeah, I'm I'm going there. I, I you know I, you know, I, I I've been going. There. What are you writing in Paris? Uh, I I write all kinds of stuff. I write you know like. You know, I, I, the, the book that I'm working on, my next book that I'm working on is a, more of a sh- series of short stories that's a little more clean. Yeah. My first book that I publish is very, very more like journaling, kind yeah. of, uh, uh, very much a 20 year old. It's very, very yeah. juvenile in right. that kind of way. Cause I wrote it when I was 20. Yeah. Uh, um, so this one's gonna be a little clean, but also I write a lot of just really weird, like kooky kind of things. I, yeah. I, I wish I could show it to you so bits you can actually pieces. see it. Yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. It's bits and pieces. Like notebook, like this, this might be a poem, it might be a saying, it might be an adage. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's, it's very notebooky. You know, yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. But you know, whatever. That I, was I, the I, first I, book? Uh, well, yeah, it was like that. And yeah. this kind of like, I also work on that kind of stuff always. It's yeah. kind of just how I stylistically will kind of go, or at least when I'm kind of, in my manic state and can't sleep. Are you manic? Do you get that? Uh, yeah, I can go there. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, I, there's certain times where I'm just awake for like, you know, two days or whatever. Really? And, you know, yeah. And just certain kind of energy is that, takes me over. But then next thing you know, I sleep for like three days too. You know, but so. is it like a diagnosing? Do you, do you take medicine for it or are you like? No, no, no. I mean, I, that, yeah. I, I, I'm, uh, uh, my lifestyle affords me, uh, the, the opportunity to be that way. Let's oh. put it that way. So, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> Yeah, I don't so what if you're up for a week? Right, as long as you don't hurt anybody or yourself. Exactly, but you don't get the downs with it. No, no, it's it's not it's not manic depressive. Or anything you just like that. get mania. Yeah, it's kind of just oh yeah, I kind of get this like yeah, I can't sleep kind of thing, which is fine. Like I I'm totally happy with that. Yeah, so let's uh, let's let's go back. Yeah, okay, sure. Wait, <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> let's see. How did you get here? Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to this morning. Do you you don't you don't have a place here. Not in L.A., no, not anymore. I did live out here for the better part of eight years, though. Yeah. When you were, like, a kid? No, no. I was actually in my 20s when I was dating a lady that lived out here. So more and more of my stuff ended up out here, and then I had a key. And Wait, which, w- which lady? Just a, an, a, a, a lady. A, big, a, a lady. Unknown lady? Yeah. An, yeah. Un, uh, yeah, just a... Just a not um, a famous lady? A, a lady friend. Yeah, you had a lady friend way. out here. Yes, I had a lady friend out here. And so, yeah, so for nearly all my 20s, I was actually out here. Uh, but it was uh, in West Hollywood, so it was very walkable. Right. You know, so I, I still don't have a driver's license. I'm a New Yorker through and through. Still, well, yeah. yeah, the trains are good. Yeah, but I was able to do, yeah, and just you know, I, it was pre-Uber, so I had sure. actually had every number for every single taxi cab, company, cab, yeah, 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 and I knew which neighborhoods they served. Isn't that wild? You had to wait for a cab. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly, and it looked like a taxi. Yeah. yeah. And were you, at that time, were you like living the life? Did you have a lot of friends out here? Yeah, I mean, uh, L.A., like any other place, is what you make it. Same thing yeah. with Paris, whatever. Sure. And so, yeah, you surround yourself with the right kind of people, and yeah, you did find you? A, 
Yeah, I did. I did. For, well, for the most part, <laughs> with like one exception. <laughs> what is that? No, I'm, I'm not going there. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, man. I know. Listen, I'm trying not to be too guarded with you. Are you friends with your brother? Yeah, yeah. My my brothers. I'm third of seven. But yeah, the actor. Yeah, no, actually, Rory, uh, my brother Rory is the youngest. He acts, and Kieran. He's, Kieran uh, acts, too, yeah, right? Yeah. Are they out here? No, no, they're in New York. I'm the only person who's ever lived outside of New York City. So you're all still in New York? Yeah, we're a New York family kind of thing. I'm the, I'm the adventurous one. I'm the one who, like, yeah, will live out in Los Angeles or in Paris or and, whatever. And they, like, they're all, they're set, how many are there? I'm third of seven. So it, my mother didn't have a, a family. She had a litter. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> is she litter. still around? Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's uh, married in Montana. She's a rancher's wife now. I just went to go visit her. She has chickens and horses and the whole works. Really? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she was from North Dakota originally. And so she kind of doubled back in the, you know, the, in her kind Did of twilight years. she grow up with ranchers? Uh, her father was a rancher, and like, yeah, some of her, uh, serious. Cause she's like 11 of 13. Like, she had like half the size family that she came from. Really? Yeah, barefoot and pregnant. That was kind of the, uh, the philosophy. When I did think. she start having kids? In, uh, uh, 75, 76. And who's, who's the oldest? Uh, uh, my oldest, uh, Shane. Uh huh. So they went with, uh, so they were Shane and Dakota. So they were like very Western kind of names, like, you know, like, yeah, like kind of, and then, uh, then they went straight Irish for the rest of the names for a while. And Macaulay and Kieran, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, Christian Patrick Coke and, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And she's in Montana. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Married to a rancher. Married to a rancher. Mm-hmm. And she never married your father. Nope. Nope. They were never married. This is actually and they her had first marriage. Seven kids. Yep. Yep. And in one bedroom apartment. Stop. Uh, yeah. In a one bedroom apartment on like uh, in, it was called Yorkville back then. Now it's called Spanish Harlem. And, uh, yeah, they stacked us on top of each other. It was a four room apartment for nine, what, what, nine people. What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> That's exactly the phrasing I, I said, I said to her, I said, Mom, what the hell were you freaking thinking? And what, what'd she say? She kind of just, I, I liked, I like kids. I, you know, I, I, this is what I wanted. Like I said, there was a certain kind of barefoot pregnant kind of thing that I think she felt that that's what a woman's kind of place was a little bit. But I mean, but seven? I know. Believe me, she couldn't even afford one. They couldn't even afford one. Believe what, you me. But you're, uh, yeah, until they, 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 they turned you out. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. No, they put us to freaking work fast. You know, yeah. yeah. I, I was, yeah, I, I was just the, I was just the third one that they tried to turn out. You know, this yeah. one's cute. Get yeah. him in front of the this, camera. Yeah, there you go. Like, you know. Push him out under the spotlight. This one can talk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, by the grace of God, go I. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but you, they, they were broke, but was, what did, she didn't work? She didn't have a, she wasn't in no, New York for a reason? No, uh, no, my father pretty much plucked her off the side of a road. Really? Uh, yeah, if, if you've driven on in a road. In Dakota? Yeah, in North Dakota, if you were in, uh, if you've driven on a road in North Dakota, chances are my family helped build it. Uh-huh. In one form or another. Uh-huh. Uh, and so she was the stop slow chick with, with the sign. Oh yeah? And my father was driving cross country. Come on, this is it. And he was like 27, she was 17, and pretty much like plucked her off the side of the road. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and she was pretty too. And yeah. She was a pretty, you know, she was a PYT. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And uh, uh, yeah, we brought and her back to New York, and she'd walk around uh, Central Park barefoot. She'd pick the flowers, and everyone's like, "Don't pick the flowers!" Like, you know. oh, really? So she, so was this hippie time? Yeah, hippie dippy. Yeah, this is like mid seventies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But your old man, what, what, what did he do? Uh, he was a, uh, 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 he was a, a, an attempted actor, dancer. Uh, pretty much everything that I've done in my life. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, oh, he's, what, he's like, I failed, I'll make the kid do it, or what? I mean, essentially, like, yeah, there was an element of that uh-huh. kind of thing. And I was actually an afterthought. It was my older brother that he was kind of just wanted him to Which be one? the dancer. Uh, uh, Shane, he was the oldest. Shane. What's he do now? Uh, he floats. Yeah. He floats around. You know, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He kind of just, yeah, he's floating. How old is he? Uh, he's, uh, 41. So yeah, we, we we still my my mother has a a kid in her forties and a kid still in her twenties kind of thing. Okay, we we span from Gerald Ford to H uh, W Bush. <laughs> so <laughs> this generation. So Shane floats. Yeah. So, but in general, um, wanted him to be the actor, dancer, things, and it was kind of just well, I'll just take Mac along. Let's see what happens, kind of thing. Uh-huh. And next, you know, 
I'm booking like every gig. I get into school for American Ballet like this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, you know, so I was a, I was a professional ballet dancer for a couple of years. Like, As a kid? Yeah. Well, I mean, what is there to do other than Swan Lake and the, the Nutcracker? Uh, Nutcracker and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, and also it was one of those things where. I don't know if you know, there's no kids in Swan Lake. Is there? No, it's I don't just a Nutcracker. So. I don't think so. It's just pretty much nutcracker. just a Nutcracker. Yeah. You wait yeah. around a year. Our, our season revolves around the Nutcracker. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I remember like showing up to my class because it was, the audition was just like, it was, it was a breeze kind yeah. of thing. And then I show up and I go, no wonder it was a breeze. I'm the third boy and there's like 40 girls in there, which is a great ratio. Sure. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. How old were you? Uh, like when seven? I first got in, like, about, like, yeah, like seven, eight kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah, I did like the, like 88, 89 seasons and things like that. So, yeah. how, how, so, okay. So that me so that's when you, that was your first showbiz gig. Doing the ballet? No, actually, I did a lot of off Broadway too before that kind of thing. I did some Gilbert and Sullivan kind of thing. Like actually. you were I, the little kid. I, I was a little sailor boy on the HMS Pinafore. Like, you know, that was me. Yeah. So I was actually just listening to it last night. Like, yeah, I was introducing so, my girlfriend to to Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she'd never heard it before. No, no. no. Oh. I mean, you know. Just, yeah. I mean, who has? Right. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure most of your listeners are well versed in Gilbert and Sullivan. Come on. Like, I, well, I couldn't. I don't know if I could name a bunch, of, but I know that they wrote a lot of musicals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. HMS Pinafore. <laughs> For the Mikado, you know, yeah, yeah. you're one of the guard. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm well versed in, you know, in those classics at least. You did a lot so, of musical theater. So did a lot of that, and did also a lot of different off Broadway stuff, and ensemble studio theater, like uh, uh, black box theater kind of really? things. Yeah. So your old man knew the ropes in a way. He'd been, he, yeah, he'd been kicked around a little bit. You know, he w- he did, you know, some stuff when he was a kid, and uh, and again with the dancing and all that kind of stuff, but also with the acting. He pretty much never made it beyond chorus on a Broadway kind of level. Mm-hmm. You know, he was kind of just like, yeah, guy number three yeah. kind of thing. And so he did that for a while, and then like maybe booked some off Broadway things, uh-huh. and then dried yeah, up, and then kind of dried up. And I think he had an incident, and then you know, next thing you know, he's having a family. You know, he had an incident. Uh Okay, I, 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 I might be telling this story wrong. So, doing King Lear, yeah. off, off, off Broadway. Right. He's playing Gloucester. <laughs> way off. Way off Broadway. <laughs> He's playing Gloucester, and Gloucester gets his eyes poked out. Yeah. Uh, uh, either like in like the second act. And I actually, did, he wore a mask, which actually I grew up with. It's actually really scary, and it was kind of just a mask with like bloody eyes coming off of it. Oh, yeah. So, he is so into his part, he yeah. closes his eyes. And so he's doing the soliloquy, and he's getting closer and closer to the edge of the stage. Yeah. And they know, he doesn't notice because he's so into the part because right. he's blind. And, yeah. and then he spills into the first row. Yeah. And hurts himself. This is opening night. Yeah. <laughs> and injures himself and can't do the rest of the run of the whole of the whole show. Uh-huh. And apparently that was like the last acting gig he ever did because it was quite embarrassing. And I remember actually talking to like a producer that I was when I was doing some theater stuff like, you know, as an adult. Uh-huh. And he goes, That was your father? And I go, Yep. Uh, so he, <laughs> it's it's kind of like it's semi notorious. It's a myth. It's yes. a myth. He's a myth in the uh, exactly. it's infamous. Oh yeah, no, a couple of uh, the yeah. infamous blind fall. Culkins have a couple of those like Broadway, off Broadway kind of like stories. Yeah. Like, uh, um my uh my brother Shane, uh he uh in Spalding Gray's A Monster in a Box, sure. uh, at the end he talks about doing Our Town, yeah. and my brother Shane was that, and he talks about the kid who vomited on stage. That's my brother Shane. <laughs> uh, uh, Kieran did a show where he, uh, the, where the other characters were smoking a joint, uh, uh-huh. you know, and, uh, he put real pot in it one day. Uh huh. So, like, it actually made the whole, like, the whole theater smell like pot. Right. And, and like, yeah, there's lots of those kind of like, wait, that was your brother? That was your father? That was your brother? Like, yep, yep. Like, no, we, we, we have a lot yeah. of notorious you're, stories. You're, 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 uh, a, a theatrically, uh, a theater, a theater family. That doesn't have a lot of success, but it has some <laughs> dramatic incidents. Yeah, apparently, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Other than you, yeah, exactly. And no, no, actually, no, no. Brother's Kieran, gone on. Kieran and Rory, they, they, they're they, both too good. They yeah. and they hustle. I mean, and, as a kid, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Kieran worked a good amount too. Like, you yeah. know, Kieran's actually always kind of been working. And then he took a big long break, and now he's kind of getting back into it. Now that he's married, <laughs> he's, anyone kids, have kids? kids? Got to earn, you know. <laughs> Who's got? Has he got kids? No, 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 no not yet. Kids? Yeah, exactly. Seven, you know, my mother, my mother has seven, like, children, and none of them have, uh, uh, we have no, you know, I have no nieces or nephews. And, uh, I say, like, Ma, don't you think that he actually kind of messes up a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're very hesitant to, like, pull the trigger. You know? Maybe. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, so, so let me, let me understand. Now, do you get along with your father still, or you don't? No, no, I haven't, I haven't spoken to him in, Really? About a quarter of a century almost. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. the way that goes. Yeah, it's the way it goes. It's it's the way it has to be. Yeah. Um, I understand know. that. I, yeah, I was never tight with him to begin with. And so it's kind of just, it's, 
like uh, my concept of a father almost is one of those things that you like get from like uh, uh, TV shows and movies. Yeah. You know, rather than actually having like, affection for a father. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was I, never tight with him. Yeah, I got a difficult father, but not not in the same way. I don't imagine. But um, but like, let's go. Like when you started doing the movies and the TV, what was the first gigs that you had in uh, on film or on camera? Uh, I started actually like I was very lucky. I started uh, booking uh, movies kind of right off the bat. Like I didn't do a lot of commercials right. or anything like that. Like, right. Not a lot of TV. You yeah. Know, like, you know, guest spot on the Equalizer. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, it was just movie, movie, movie. And then uh, Billy Hopkins, who was a casting director, uh, just like he actually directed me in some of that black box theater kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he also did a lot of John Hughes like things. And so yeah, like he was so a that, casting director. Yeah. And so then he, so then boom, Uncle Buck happens, and then you know shit rolls downhill. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or yeah, and that's good or bad. Oh no, it was fantastic. No, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, so, no, no, shit's fantastic. Uncle Buck was the was the first movie, really. No, no, I'd already done like three or four things yeah. before then. Like what? Uh, it was Rocket Gibraltar. See you in the morning. I did. Uh, I did a a day on Born on the Fourth of July. Oh yeah, uh, but it was cut out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then boom, yeah, Uncle Buck. And yeah. then I like I just remember the final callbacks. How uh, old were you, man? I was about seven or eight. Yeah, something like that. I just remember when I was auditioning with John Candy. Uh, uh, I ended up going between his legs for yeah. some reason. Like it was, I was very, very physical, uh-huh. you know? and they was kind of just like, yeah, like there you go, kid. Like you know, like, you know. So yeah, I was just, I was just a fearless kind of kid. Like I didn't really have perspective, you know. So sure. I kind of just did stuff. But you had a sense of of comedy. I mean, sure. I mean, like, you know, like, yeah, it, 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 yeah. that's not something that you learn, per that's se, true, especially but I mean, at that age. You know, yeah. Right, but like, you, you know... I understood in, time. I, knew what I, I, I like to make adults laugh. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. That's good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it serves you well. So when you do these auditions, when you're working with, I mean, because I, I, you know, I've been on sets where they have kids, and you know, everyone's got to be... Kids sort of, and animals, yeah. Yeah, you got to be delicate. It's, it's just sort of, uh, you got to be careful... And you got, yep. Yep. they've got to go to school at some point during the day. Three hours a day. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're working with someone like John Candy, what are your memories of that guy? Uh, he was always really sweet. He was really good with us. Yeah. Because it was me and another uh, girl, Gabby Hoffman. Uh, and who, is all, who is now a big actress? Yeah, yeah, exactly. On Transparent. She, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, she's you know, she's, yeah, she's good. great. Yeah, she's she's stuck to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's because you don't want to deal with freaking kids. Like they, yeah, right. they are annoying. And right. like, honestly, he he had a very g- gentle touch with us uh-huh. and all that. Like, I, I think some of that was also developing a rapport with us because he it, you know needed to translate to screen. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like now, now compared to like other people that I'd worked with when I was a child, look like, at yeah, he was. He he had a deft touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> and he's a good guy. And he was a good dude. Like he, he sincerely, like yeah, like I, I, you know, yeah, I, I liked him. And he was always just like yeah. He, uh, I, I, he figured out I think something really early on with me back then was, yeah. uh, ask me a question. And I'll start rattling off, and so like just let the kid prattle on, right? You know what I mean? Like right. that, that that'll keep the kid entertained yeah. if you kind of just ask him questions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, it wasn't like he was like pulling out a quarter behind my ear, kind right. of thing. He kind needs to like, entertain you, yeah. Kind of like, what do you think of those teamsters? Well, then you know, yeah, right. then, like, you, you just go. <laughs> yeah, oh, so you're kind of a low maintenance kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get mean, him talking. Like, well, here's the thing: is that they always kind of want like the kid, like especially like the stuff they were asking me to do, very, very physical, very, very loud, very, yeah. very big, and boisterous. Yeah. Uh, so they. they Wanted me like you know practically like, hopped up on sugar practically yeah and then at the same time when you don't want that it's hard for the kid to wind down a little bit right <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so you're always wound up yeah yeah I mean like, exactly yeah but I mean this is not like a Julie Gar you know Judy Garland kind of thing they're not hopping me up yeah. with reds and blues and all that kind of stuff it wasn't like that <laughs> <Just> candy <laughs> yeah exactly it was it was just like Here, here's a Coca Cola kid now yeah. action yeah <laughs> now who was on set with you usually your mom uh, it was usually my father actually oh, yeah, yeah I, I was on the road with him uh, 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 a lot. <laughs> so, so he took charge. Uh, yes, no, he was definitely took the reins and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I, it's not like I made like career decisions. Like, I, sure. I, I, it's not like I read the script and said like, oh yeah, I want to do this kind of thing. Right. It's kind of just like, oh, you're gonna read this script, right? And like, you know, are you not? Are you going to do this script? Like, yeah, like I didn't read Home Alone before I did it. I would do, I would do the scenes individually. I, I, I knew what the gist was. Yeah, yeah but I, he, I decided, knew what the arc was. he decided. He decided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a schmucky kid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like that's, I don't know. I did, you did all right. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, but it was also, uh, 
learn your lines, you know, uh, hit your marks, find your light. Who said that? That no, was just kind of the way it was. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure, yeah. But wait, but like, how many movies did you do with John Hughes? Three? Uh, three. Yeah. I, actually, it's after he died, I, I realized I'd actually done as many John Hughes movies as Molly Ringwald, technically. Oh. Uh-huh. It, cause it, people associate Molly Ringwald with John Hughes, at least early John Hughes. And it's actually John Pretty Handy. Pink, The Breakfast Club, and what was the other one? Uh, 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 that she did? uh, 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 Sweet Sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or Sixteen Candles. There you go. Sixteen Candles, yeah. Uh, but actually, it was John Candy. He was the one. He did nine movies with him. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, I did. I did three. Yeah. And did, what was your impression of him? He was fantastic. He was soft and sweet. He yeah. was again good with me. Yeah. Uh, um, but also had like a, just a soft and sweetness to him. Yeah. And uh, uh, actually cared. Actually like gave a crap. Would actually ask me how I was doing. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And when I got older, like he would actually ask me. He would talk to me like an adult, and other people didn't do that to me. Uh huh. Um, so you know, I, I I hold him in very very high regard. Look at, yeah. and he was. A, he seemed like he was a very um. Well, he definitely understood the 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 mind of you know kids through adolescence. You know the the well, arc of that, and then he started moving backwards. Like, yeah. you know, then he started doing a lot of kids movies. Yeah. Because I mean, he wrote the Beethoven movies. People don't realize that he wrote like Baby's Day Out. Oh really? Uh, oh yeah. No, he wrote like uh, he actually wrote, uh, uh, or at least he pitched, and uh-huh. it was his pitch was Made in Manhattan yeah. and Drill Bit Taylor. Remember those? Drill Bit Taylor. That was the Adam Sandler project. No, no, that, that's uh, Owen, Sp- Owen Wilson. Owen oh, Wilson. Owen yeah, Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, uh, they hire a bodyguard. Yeah, like, right, right. Out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They, they uh, made that movie. No, exactly. No, that's <laughs> what I mean. People don't realize that those are actually technically John Hughes movies. That, right. You know, that they were just those are old pitches of his. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so which ones? Which? But he only directed you in two. Uh, no, uh, directed me in Uncle Buck, and that was virtually that was it. it. That was pretty much and it. And he wrote Home Alone? Oh, yeah. He wrote uh, both the Home Alone movies, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But he was around? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, of course. He would pop in, but also it was that writer kind of thing, and he did hand the reins over to Chris Columbus. And the thing is, he wrote Home Alone specifically for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, after Uncle Buck kind of thing. He, it was that, that thing of the kid looking through like the, the little uh, mail slot, yeah. you know, protecting his home. Yeah. And he was like, and so he, Pretty much, he literally spent a weekend and wrote Home Alone for me. And he gave it to Chris Columbus, so Chris Columbus wasn't going to, like, just give me the part just on his say-so. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. No, you I had, had to work to, for it? Yeah, I had, to, I had to hustle. But it was also the last audition I did in a long, long time, too. How is Daniel Stern? <laughs> Always sweet. Yeah. You know, again, what you have to remember is that I'm not really in a lot of scenes with those guys. I guess that's true. Yeah, no, that's the thing. It's 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 almost. Uh, my my buddy brought it up uh, the other day. He goes, it's kind of a, it's closer to Castaway. Yeah. In a certain extent, <laughs> where it's like, no, I do a lot of scenes by myself, talking to myself and all that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really just in like yeah, like I can probably count on you know just. Uh, d- definitely on one hand, but probably on like two or three fingers. How many scenes I were, you know? Because oh, they just shot that other side later. Exactly. Yeah. This is going on over here. That's going on over there. And then finally, it all happens, you know, at the end. Uh, even, but, even the crawling, you know, like across the rope or things like that, or like you know, the tarantula kind of like things like that's yeah. all. That's that's all like not in the same room. Also, because I can only work X amount of hours a day too. So they had to figure out how to be economical about yep, it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you didn't get to really hang out with like. Catherine O'Hara or Pesci or anything. Not like. really, because also I'm not working with them. Like you know, what I mean, even though we're in the same movie, I'm not working yeah, with them. It's so sad to know how the fucking sausage is made. Sometimes, right? Right? Exactly. I mean, that's why theater is sort of beautiful. Yeah, because it's intertwined you know? no matter what. Yeah, and you know, it's in uh, it's in real time, and it's not you know a bunch of takes. It's not so weirdly uh, kind of um, workman like. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, all right, we got get, we got that coverage. Now we're going to yeah. go in closer. Exactly. It's it's not as savage, you know. Well, it's it's the uh they say what is it? Uh TV is the writers forum. Yeah. Uh because I was actually surprised when I've done some TV where it's like after every take all the writers get together with you and oh, yeah, yeah. direct you. Well, try like this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then movie, you know, film is a director's forum. Yeah. Essentially, it doesn't matter, like, even with what you do. Like, he's going to use whatever take he wants. That's right. And theater is the actor's forum. Okay. It doesn't matter what's written on the page. It doesn't matter what the director tells you to do. You can get up there and do whatever <laughs> you, you want. You can fuck up the show on your own. Exactly. You can close your eyes and fall off the front of the stage mm-hmm. during Lear. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's up to you. And get all Gloucester on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, so, uh, I've always enjoyed theater. Theater's actually my favorite form. When you, when you think back, when you look back on, if you want smoke, you can smoke in here. Oh, um, oh really? Yeah. You can pull that shit out of look, there. Look at you. You, you are, you are a delight, sir. But yeah, what do you remember about that time? Like, cause it was pretty crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, like, now, like, cause I, I don't know, like, I imagine whatever, you know, we can move through whatever, you know, went down between you and your old man, but I imagine that, 
you know, he was probably living it up and, and you were living it up as much as a nine year old could. But I mean, what did it look like for you out here? Um, well, the thing is actually money didn't really start rolling in until like, you know, after that kind of thing. It's not like I got paid like, you know, a truckload, uh, you know, for home alone. Or but like that. not until the second one, maybe? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's when like, yeah, like that's, you know, so, you had like, some back end on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We were still living in that one bedroom apartment. Come with on. People like for after, after home alone came out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, t- it took us a minute, like, you know, to get uh-huh. all that kind of stuff, uh-huh. you know, going and out yeah. there. Um, and here's the way I'll put it is that I, I, I didn't know any other life. So this is like, this is the way it works. Yeah. This is the hero's journey, essentially, you know? Yeah. It's, you know, oh, you start working, you start working little black box theaters, and then you start booking small movies, then you do big movies, and then you're a big fat superstar, and that's the way it works. At 10. Well, that's, well, yeah. you don't know, yeah. any, but you have no perspective. No, I know, but you're right, but that, that is sort of the way it works at any age. Yeah. But I mean, you know, oddly. Yeah. You, oddly, you, mm-hmm. you were able to get some theater chops in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get some ballet chops in and some the- yeah. black box theater in there. Yeah, that you know, really yeah. paid your dues. Yeah, oh yeah, no, believe you me, exactly. I mean, I, you know, cause yeah, yeah cause I was on the circuit. Thankfully, I got off the circuit for a while, but like, yeah, doing those nine auditions a day in the dead of summer kind of thing, like, you know, like, you know. Oh, you mean after Home Alone? No, before, before. Like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I did like that. So, I mean, I, like you know, hustled. I, you know, I hustled for my dinner. Let's yeah, put it that but way. was your father like running all you guys? Just me and Kieran were booking a lot. Yeah, and was Rory was, too. But he was young. Yeah, yeah, he was young. But also, he played young me in like a zillion movies because he actually looks a lot like me. So like, yeah, pretty much every picture of young me or any kind of thing like yeah, no, it, it's it's Rory. He built a career out of being young you. Yep, exactly. Uh-huh. Like, you know, yeah, but now now that that kid is always working. It's hilarious. Like I'll, now? I'll reach out to him and kind of like yeah, I'm in Hungary right now doing like he's doing like just a zillion indies. The dude oh, yeah. is like the how dude, old is he now? He is what twenty eight, twenty eight, yeah, twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, he, and like I said, he hustles. He actually, so, like, he's always in perpetual motion. He's actually never stopped ever since he had his, like, you know, like his teens. Just, he's always doing something. He was, uh, you know, he was in, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, he was the, uh, killer in Scream 4. Like that oh, kind of thing. Like, really? You know what I mean? Like he, yeah, like he's, he's doing he'll do stuff. A, do whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Like, he'll do it. Like, yeah, he, he hustles for his He dinner. likes to work. Yeah, exactly. He likes to work. He enjoys the business. Like it, it was, him and my, uh, you know, old brother that was a little bit older than him, uh, uh, like they would be on the set of Home Alone 2 and, you know, Chris, the one who's a little older, would go, there's the burglars. And Roy go, oh, there's Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Yeah, right. You know what right. I mean? Even, right. though, even though, even though he was younger, like, yeah. he actually, like, he, he got it. Like, well, he what does Chris do? He is, uh, uh, Floating around, he's, he writes a lot. He was writing for a magazine, like he got, you know, he, uh, majored in like journalism uh-huh. and all that stuff. And he just went back to school for, uh, uh, film and all oh, yeah. So he's still in school. Are any of the Calkin kids just doing a regular job, a nine to five or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my, my, my sister is a, is a chef. Like, okay. you know, yeah, okay. yeah, she went to the French Culinary Institute. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, making that happen kind of thing. And is like, she yeah. at a restaurant now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh. doing, yeah, she's doing anything. She's doing anything. And you guys get together, uh, all together ever? Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, we we like try to make that happen. Like, yeah, uh, I've been away for a lot of these holidays. Like you know, recently, like you know, like this holiday, I'm spending it with my girlfriend. Uh-huh. You know, and things like that. Yeah, but yeah, like we 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 make it happen. We have game nights and things right. like that. You know? So your old man's running three. Pretty much, you know, yeah, yeah. just sh- swapping you to yeah, r- r- running me into the ground. You know, yeah, yeah. And and when in now, when did you? Sort of, um, like, what was the socialization? Because, you know, when you talk, when you hear, like, Drew Barrymore talk or any other, you know, child actors, you know, who went on to exist in the business, mm-hmm. there seemed to be a, a strange world for them, like, if they weren't protected properly. Did yeah. you find that? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the balance between being pr- protected properly and being overly protected. Because uh-huh. otherwise you have no social skills, uh-huh. you know, and right. so... Uh, after I did Richie Rich, like in 90, you know, 93 or 94 or something like that, uh, I, and then, you know, my father and my mother finally, you know, called it quits, which was one of the best things that ever happened. Uh, um, I was able to actually like walk away from the business. I even wanted to take a break for a while and eventually, like, like I just was like, I'm done. I'm done guys. Like, I, you know, I, I, uh, I hope you all made your money because there's no more coming from me. And it's, you know, really. Yeah. So now, but like, I guess I quit sp- for like eight years. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. More specifically, like when, when you're out here, like, how do you, how do you end up having a relationship with Michael Jackson? Oh, that was, uh, he actually, well, we'd actually met when I was actually doing the Nutcracker on, on, and, uh, on, uh, uh, Lincoln Center. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, he came backstage before the show, and of course, like, everyone's, you know, like. He loved the Nutcracker? Yeah, I mean, he'll yeah. dance, like, yeah. man. Like, he was, he was a, he was a dance man. Like, yeah, he was a dancer, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, um, Doug, that actually, 
<laughs> Funny enough, he actually came backstage with Donald Trump because uh, uh, they were friendly back then. Uh, Is that true? Mm-hmm. Pre-presidential. I mean, I'm talking like 1988. Uh, Donald and how Trump. old are you? You're like eight? You're like eight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we met, and that's the thing is that like I would do Uncle Buck or whatever, and yeah. then, I, then I'd race back to New York to do the my ballet record. stuff. That's your yeah. one, once a year gig. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 you know. And so, uh, um, <laughs> but kid. I remember, I remember he looked at me and he's like, "I know you from somewhere." And I was like, "Yeah," I said, "I also do movies, also yeah. kind of thing." And he was like, mm, "And then I think he finally found." He's like, "Oh, Uncle Buck," and yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." And he goes, "Yeah, you're funny." And I'm like, "Oh, thanks," you know. And that was about it. And what Trump say anything? <laughs> Gosh, it wasn't memorable. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then, uh, um, and then after Home Alone came out, uh, he reached out to, like, me and, yeah. like, my family, kind of just, listen, there's, there's no, like, like, child actor self-help group or anything like that. You yeah. know what I mean? You kind of, sometimes you reach out to certain kids if you want, you want to make sure they're all right. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like, believe you me, I, I've, you know, I've extended the same kind of before, like no, nothing, like you know, like too crazy. But he's like, yeah, like I, you know, do you want to hang out? I know things are weird. Yeah. So come over to my house, like yeah. kind of thing. And so yeah, so went with my whole family, and next you know, we're like we were friends. We were like seriously, he was like m- like my best friend growing up for like a, like a good fat stretch of really? my life. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it was it was legitimate friendship. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think uh, what was it? He was emotionally young. Yeah. He was. Well, it was also, he enjoyed, he enjoyed, like, kind of just, you know, at least, you know, I can speak for myself, at least, uh, he enjoyed my youthfulness. Yeah. Kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And, of course, he was a kid himself. He kind of, like, he he liked being a kid, like, with me, like, you know, like, and my brother, and, like, you know, but it was... But yet he was, like, what, 20 years older? Uh, yeah, that seems yeah. about right. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. But, like, he never really, like, you know, I mean, you, you know, you can get all kind of, like, you know, do all the psychology sure, on it. Sure, no, no, like, yeah. Oh, he never had his childhood. This right, 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 right. All, all I can speak to, really, is, you know, like, the way he was. And, you know, uh, you know, d- despite whatever the reasoning was, kind of thing. Yeah. But, no, he liked being around kids. And, and it wasn't odd. No. To you. It was, honestly, it never struck me as odd. I never felt uncomfortable or anything like that. I never thought it was weird, because it was actually, like, he was, that was the way that he was. You know, it was just, it was huh. like down to his bone marrow uh-huh. kind of thing. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. that, yeah, so it wasn't. So you never thought it, so it didn't, it didn't come off as, as creepy because you, you bought it because it was authentic. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, yeah, I didn't buy it. It just was. Okay. You know what I mean? I, 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 yeah, he wasn't selling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, it was just that. Yeah, I know, exactly. you, do, you do want, there, there's some part of you that wants to, or me, you know, when you think about the, you know, the, what you've heard in that situation, mm-hmm. just in general, to make it, you know, Untoward. Yeah. No. And it, but that was not your experience. That was not my experience at all, kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. And it was, it was, you know, it, it was the fact that, like, my mind didn't go there. That was one yeah. of the reasons why he liked hanging around a guy like me. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. You know, yeah. like, it was just like, yeah, like, it never felt weird. Right. It was just the way that it was. Yeah. And it, and it was, I, look, so- I looked at him for who he was rather, cause listen, at that point, like, I, you know, I was pretty famous, I guess, you know, and, yeah. and I'd met plenty of famous people. Like, yeah. his fame did not, like, make a thing. But like, yeah, but, but he So, was- like, so I was not enamored by him. You know, I was. I get it. I yeah, get it. It was kind of just like, no, we're we're right. We're but you're friends. But you're up there at the theme park or the the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of other kids around. Um, sometimes kind yeah. of thing. Uh, um, but it's usually a like family of staff kind of thing. Like sure. you know, like yeah, like kind of just like oh, they'll have did like a day. Did he strike you as lonely and sad and and like did you ever get a read uh, on? As I got older, there was a little bit of that. Definitely, you know, it, yeah, like, uh, uh, and, you know, yeah. But when I was younger, like, yeah, it yeah. was kind of just you're nine, ten years old. You don't really read yeah. things right. in that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, N- not unless it's dramatic. Exactly. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't sulking, like you know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think it was like, if anything, you know, if he was that way, uh, um, when I hang out with him, like it was a respite. Yeah. From that kind of loneliness. Uh, like, were you in touch with him up until the end? Uh, yeah, I, I hadn't spoken to him in a while because he was like bouncing all over the place. Like, uh-huh. you know, he was, you know, he was, I think, in Dubai for a while. Like, you know, yeah, and then he was doing his, you know, like just, he just didn't want to go back home. 
he never went back to Santa Barbara again, kind of thing. Like, uh-huh. yeah, because it just, I don't know, everything in his life felt tainted, you know, except for, like, Why? his, his immediate, because that was what happened, like, yeah. with that, with that last trial. Yeah. You know, everything was tainted. Right. Uh, so that's why kind of just trying to start over a uh-huh. little bit, like, you know, and the only thing that really, like, was important to him was his immediate family, his children and stuff. And Are I, you friends with them? Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm the, um, I'm the godfather, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm close with, uh, uh, um, Paris. You yeah. Know, yeah. I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm going to warn you now, I'm very protective of her. So. Yeah. Just look at, I'm, I'm a very open book when it comes to things, but like, with her, it's like, no, uh, she is, uh, she is beloved by me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, the, you know. I'm uh, not looking for anything. I, I know, I know you're not, <laughs> and I'm just like, I know you're not, and I, I, and I, I I'm just letting you know, like, yeah, yeah. But if you, if you want to start going down that road, like, I, it's going to be a dead end, you know, but I, yeah, but I mean that in the fact that, like, I, I, I love her so much. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And well, she's doing all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. She's she's tall and beautiful and smart. I'm like, yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs> so, how old were you when you did SNL? You hosted SNL, right? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I think I just turned eleven. I was promoting My Girl. Oh, really? Was, eleven yeah. years old. Yep. yep. Who was in? Who was on the cast? What kind of debauchery was going? on? I was just about to say this was yeah. this was the I, almost ideal cast because Carvey was Carvey's last season. Yeah. Uh, Hartman was still there. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, Neilan was still there. Yeah. Victoria Jackson, that whole group. Uh, but Farley and Sandler and Rock and wow. Myers were all there. Yeah. So so it was that transitional year. Yeah. And how did they treat you? Uh, they were all good with me. I mean, like. Listen, I mean, again, like, it was one of those things where, like, I, you know, I show up and, yeah. like, you know, hit your mark, find your lights kind of sure. thing. So when and it your came dad's to, there. Yeah, honestly, like, yeah, like, they're, they're pitching more to my dad, really, at that point. Right. It's also kind of just, like, yeah. What can the kid do? Yeah, kind of, a little, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> not so bad, but it's also kind of like, uh, um, you know, Simon or Sprockets. Right, you know, like Mike right. Myers, I was, it was like, I, I can only do one, you know. Right. So it was that kind of stuff yeah, a little yeah. bit, and then like you know, because you do those whatever like Monday meetings or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then then like on Tuesday they've already written something out, and then Wednesday, you know, like I said, I I just showed up and but yeah, my father my father was such a, like, a crazy person about yeah. like you know, and then I, I did do the whole episode without cue cards. He wanted you to do it without cue cards. Yeah. So also that meant every uh, every uh, um, other person in the cast couldn't have cue cards either in any scene that I was in. No key cards. Or that was your father's idea. Yeah. Because he, 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 didn't, cause he didn't like it when people glanced off and looked at the cue cards kind of thing. So were you, you, you pretty good with the memory or? I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't miss my lines, man. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I totally did it. <laughs> and, uh, was that I, out of terror? Yeah, no, no, I, I was actually, I was just good, man. Like, yeah. it's one of those things where I could, like, if I lost my place, yeah. uh, I would just picture the page that I was reading off of and right. just read it. <laughs> oh, oh, you could do that? I could do that back then. You got like, that, yeah, that yeah, brain? Yeah. Now, now, now it's, you know, I'm, I'm right in little... the corner to 40. It's yeah. a little fuzzy nowadays, you know. Yeah. And who was the, who was the, the musical guy? It was, it was David Bowie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, Tin Machine, David Bowie, but David oh, Bowie. Oh, fucking Tin Machine, Hunt Sales on drums. <laughs> yep, yep. Tony yep, Sales on bass. Yep. I can't remember the guitar player's name, but Hunt Sales is a monster yep. on those fucking drums. No, it was, it was, it was super cool. I also, yeah. I love how it ages me too. Uh huh. Like, like, it actually makes me sound even older than I was. Well, Tin Machine's like, uh. But also just David uh, Bowie, <laughs> just in sure. general, it makes it sound like I did the show in like 1982. I don't know. I miss him, man. You know, it's like I, yeah. I, I don't know how long. It's, it's one of those things where. You know, I don't know really the last time I, I checked in with a new Bowie album before he died. Like, I don't know, Heathen or, or some of the other ones, but, yeah, but it was always nice knowing he was around. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. He was a totem. He yeah. Was like a, he was a, yeah, yeah. And it's just like that last, right? That Dark Star record is like, is that what it's called? Dark Star or oh Black gosh. Star? I don't know. I, I have not It's great, it dude. Yeah. Yeah. But did you get to talk to him? Yeah. He was very sweet to me. I mean, of course, I'm doing a zillion things and right. I'm 11. You know, Eleven years old, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I have to memorize an entire show. And sure. Yeah, like, uh, uh, but I just remember him being very like sweet and like jokey with me. Oh and yeah. Like, yeah, like teasing like the kid. And like, honestly, I'm eleven years old. I, you know, I, I don't know what Ziggy Stardust is from a hole. Sure, in the wall, sure. You know, but like, I think uh, I, I actually think that he was a pretty proper dude. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, underneath it all. Yeah, exactly. It was like more like we met in private kind of thing. Like, sure. And when I'm doing the, the the goodbyes at the end of the show, like he puts his hat on me and then uh-huh. he keeps on pushing it forward, so it's yeah. falling over my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to do my like goodbyes, yeah. and he keeps on doing that. And I, uh, oh, that's great, man. But he was, yeah, he was super sweet. Was but it yeah, good, yeah. good memory. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I, I had a good time. Like, yeah, like I mean, honestly, it was all like, a lot of a blur. I have a friend who works there now. He does a lot of editing, uh, Edmund, and uh, he said he asked around like was, with like the old timers, have you ever heard of somebody doing the show without? Q- cards because they'd be like no that's that's insane and that's just completely insane because okay. they keep changing it right up to the wire right well, exactly no and not only that you also have to like you also have to, i had to memorize scenes that weren't in the show because you do the dress and all right. kind of stuff like and then they cut things so did, why, why this was your dad's idea yeah 
And did he like professionals know their lines? Like, that was the it, idea. Is, is that kind of idea exactly? Look at it, that's that was. So was, you did. You know, so the entire show is is acting on the behest of your father mm-hmm. to honor this idea. It's not a bad idea, but were you scared or were you just? No. Uh, Honestly, I was always a really fearless kid. That yeah. was. I think that was scared of him though. Like, did, like was he? Like, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do good or I'll hit you. Like, yeah, sure. Like, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I'm sorry, uh, buddy. I'm know, sorry. No, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not. You okay. know, because by the grace of God, here I am. I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for, you know. <laughs> you gotta look at it that way if, after a certain point. But yeah, no, he wanted, yeah, he wanted me to do it without freaking cue cards. And, 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 and you're infamous for, for a good reason. Exactly. I'll, not, not for falling down or fucking it up. Exactly. You yeah, did yeah, it yeah, without yeah. cue cards. Exactly. That's me. That's me, kids. So you said after Richie Rich, you 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 kind of you, you shut down the spigot. You, you, yep. And and your parents had, at that point were in the middle of divorce or they're divorced. Uh, no, they well they're separating like kind of thing. It's more of a oh, child right. custody thing because they were never married, like even common law. Right. So it's a, and then uh, um I spent all that time pretty much going to high school. Like that's exactly like what a normal I wanted to birth. Do. Yeah. Like I, I went there for almost purely social reasons, really. Sure. Like, yeah. Like, like I wanted to. Like, yeah. I wanted to be have other know, friends than Michael I wa- Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I had other friends too. <laughs> you 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 cheapen my experience, sir. <laughs> you decided to branch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to- uh, but yeah, no. I wanted to. Uh, yeah, I wanted to like drink forties and like yeah. you know get laid and smoke pot. Like yeah. you know, that's what I wanted to do, and that's what I did. I I, I lived. I After lived, like, Richie well. Rich. Then yeah, you, you, pretty you, much. So, but it, it, after their separation and after the fight, and I imagine that's where it soured with you and your old man. Uh, no, it was it was sour from early on, even before the fame stuff. It, really? Yeah. I, so I, you 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 disliked him all through it. Yeah, and he disliked me too. Like we didn't like each other. Really? Yeah. But then all of a sudden, imagine this now this man uh, who you dislike kind of thing, and he dislikes you. Uh, now I become the sole like uh, focus of him when I start earning. So now all of a sudden I'm like, you know, going around the country, like locked in a room with a guy who doesn't like me kind of thing. But at the same time, like, yeah, it's, you well, know, how does that, why, how, why? I was kind of even like relatively jealous, you know? I well, think, sure. Oh, he was jealous. I think so. I, 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 everything that he tried to do in his life, like I excelled at like before, but was, before but I was he, 10 years old. <laughs> right. But he was behind that in some way, right? I mean, he gave you those, he pushed you into those opportunities. Uh, sure. You know, yeah, sure. So, but I don't understand. Like, and also, I, he did the negotiation kind of stuff. But it was also kind of like I was just good at. I was a better dancer than you're, he you're was. Talented. I was a better actor yeah, than talented. he was. Right. I was a better like I was just better and more successful at so, those things. But so how did I that dislike it, manifest itself when you're eight years old? I mean, how do you feel that you know going through all that? He was a bad man. Like honestly, he was a bad man. He was abusive and like yeah, like physically and mentally. Like, yeah, like you know, like yeah. I mean, yeah. I you know, I can show you all my scars if you want to. But like yeah, no, he was a bad dude kind of thing. Um, just to you? Uh, no, no, across the board, you know, uh, but you know, I, I started catching the brunt of it after a while because, you know, you were you there know, with g- him all g- the time. Yeah, exactly. God bless the rest of my family. They, they would always get these respites whenever I was off doing a gig, you know, they get three months off from him, you know, and it would be me locked in a, but better me than somebody else. That's what I always say. And it would just be like, you know, uh, well, obviously, there's no real provoking, but I mean, just out of nowhere kind of shit, or there was a reason for it. I know you feel that was jealousy, but what would... Well, I don't necessarily feel that way. This is more of a retrospective kind no, of... No, no, like, I mean, trying to figure it out sense. kind of thing. Like, right, yeah, well, yeah, what yeah. have you figured out, that that part of it? Yeah, I think it was some of that kind of thing. And also, honestly, he was just a bad dude. Like, that's the thing. He was a bad, abusive man, like, regardless. To your mother, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was he a boozy guy? Uh, He could be, yeah. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. He was, you know, he liked his uh, uh St. Pauli girls. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, uh, the old old style upscale beer. Yeah, exactly. What a fancy pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so by the, a piece of work. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, so after Richie Rich and after their separation, you could, you know, at least legally and and as an adult, not have to deal with him anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that was what you did. Exactly. And I was I was you know I I knew I had an inheritance coming. You know, it, you know, it, it was your it was money, my money, exactly. Some kid worked really, really hard, and I'm inheriting all of his money, kind of thing. But that was interesting because they they kind of bent the law or changed. You set a precedent, right? There, there, something happened. I kind of, I, 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 I didn't necessarily uh, get emancipated, but I, um, I pretty much took their names off my money as guardianship because the judge the, ruled that way. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's the Jackie Coogan laws where X amount has to be put in a trust until yeah. you're 18. Right. That kind of stuff. But and they so, were doing that anyway. Yeah, right? that, yeah, that's, that's the law kind of right. thing. But their names were on it. And so I was able to remove their names from it and get like a family friend on top of it. Just, just, and 
Because they were get, cause I, I, they were going like, at each other. Yeah, with your money. Mm, yeah, I mean, no, not really. You know, they had yeah. their own money because they were my managers. So they got, right. they, you know, they they split fifteen percent. So they were battling, you know, like with their seven and a half percent. You know, they, they 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 drained their coffers. You know, doing that stupid shit. Yeah. But uh, 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 yeah, it was just when it came to that other like kind of just, uh, you know, a yeah. certain amount that was liquid. Yeah. That uh, that technically had his name on it. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, we just taking his name off of it. And I also took my mom's name off of it, just so like it's a clean break. Good. So you know, yeah. So you know, I was you know, uh, if I was going to be stupid, I was going to try to be smart about being stupid. That's all. And you get and you get along with your mom. Yeah, I do. That relationship was always okay. Yeah, that was always good. Okay. You know, uh, uh, um, and she knew your dad was a monster. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, you know, it, believe me, I, 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 you know, I, I've had this discussion with her where it's kind of like, oh, if you knew he was such a bad guy, like, you know, why'd you stick around the whole time, kind of thing, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, well, you know, you know, it, it, you, know you go through that portion of your life where, like, you know, you, you, you start kind of just like, I start, I, I started assessing some blame onto her a little right. bit, you know? Well, yeah. sure, yeah, because you know, how do you? It's hard to understand codependency. Yeah, it's, like, it's, you know, it's easy for her to be a good guy in a situation like that, you know, compared to, you know, and uh, just a bad dude kind of thing. So. Uh, at the same time, like no, like, I, I, I have nothing but love for my mother, and like yeah, I, and just and your old man's not reached out to you. No, not really. Um, I mean, he kind of has and all that stuff. I'm not really receptive to sure. it. Uh, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, I'm. I, it, it's not like I, I've shut that door completely or anything like that. But you it's have also a resolve just, in your heart, though. I mean, I, I yes. Mean, no, honestly, I, I, I have forgiveness in my heart. You do. Like, yeah. No. It, yeah. I, yeah. I, I've. You know. I've. I've made amends. Look, yeah. with that whole kind of thing. Oh know? yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, at the same time, I don't think he's there, so that's why I kind of don't want to like really kind of go there with him a little. You think bit. he'd worm back India? No, 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 no. He's he's, I mean, a, he's he's a feeble old man now. Oh, you know? like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like <laughs> he's not this big strong guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, he's a he's a he's a feeble old man now. You know, uh, so like, yeah, so it wouldn't be about that. Like, right. yeah, no, it'd just be. I don't think he's willing to say the things he's, you know, oh, right. you know, should say kind of thing. Right. And Pro- appropriately. Exactly. He, he, he didn't have it in him to do it. Exactly. He's and, self-involved. And honestly, I don't, uh, like, I mean, not, you know, and this is actually a judgment, I guess. I, I don't think he deserves it. <laughs> sure. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, you, no, you, if you've made your peace, you don't have to, if he's not willing to do his correctly or at all, fuck exactly. it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you, you, you know, don't owe him his peace. And you know, exactly. And like, you know, like I said, it is a judgment because it's like maybe he is and I'm not giving him that opportunity. Like, yeah, you know right, what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. So, you know, my, you know, but at the same time, like, uh, you know, I, I live a very cool, fun, fruitful life. Yeah. And like, you know, and, and that's kind of despite him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. And I, you know, I've, I've come out the other end of that, you know, that, that, that rinse cycle. Like, you know, like, being this person and you know it, it, it's and it was despite him sure you know i've done like three movies in the last like like 12 15 years like no i mean if i really wanted to pursue like if i really wanted to show him i would be pursuing oh, right. a career in hollywood kind yeah. of thing and kind of go, look i can do this without you kind yeah. of thing and it's like no no I, i'm doing it despite him like you know like, oh, it's despite, like despite. yeah yeah no, okay. exactly yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's, okay. it's like i'm, I'm okay. living i'm living like you know okay. my life yeah. you know yeah. yeah i had it wrong just, despite yeah. despite I, i'm full of spite not you <laughs> yeah. i was projecting i'm sorry <laughs> oh, there you go <laughs> But no, but that, but that that eight years where you were, you know, getting high and drinking and getting mm-hmm. laid and going to high school, and, mm-hmm. uh, did it, did did you ever? Was there a point where you had some sort of breakdown with this shit? You know, like did did you hit a wall? Like once nope. you got sort of space? Uh, no, not really. If That's anything, good. no, actually, it was it was liberating. That's really what it was. Mm. Uh, uh, um, yeah, no, I got I just got to do all the things that I wanted to do, and I got to. Start molding myself into the person I wanted to be, because I I had no real personality, and those were very formative years. Also, you know, like when you were younger. You mean when you were when you were a teenager? Oh, when you were a teenager. teenager. Like, sure. You know, yeah. th- those things are very informative about who you're going to become. And you had that kid hanging over you, the kid you oh, were yeah. on the movies. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, that that that's people it. walking up to you holding their face. That's always there. <laughs> that's always there, man. It still happens. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just you know, yeah, <laughs> like it's just it's you know, it, it's you know, and like. Especially it's, now, it's a Christmas movie, no, right? You have no idea. It is the season, man. Like, I, 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 
I get it worse in November, December. It's like on like TNT, like on like just like on a repeat kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, this is this is my time of year where I really get it. Yeah, uh, and you're all clean shaven, so you look like him again. I know, right? Uh, exactly. Like yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like I'm not, I'm not all fuzzy yeah. underground guy. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're out from underground. Yeah, exactly. But when you started acting again, I mean, Party Monster, you got good reviews. The movie was you know liked. It was yeah, a good it, movie. It's, it's a cult movie. Yeah, like, it's a neat cult movie. Yeah, kind of thing. Uh, I think Seth Green's freaking fantastic. Yeah, you know. I, I feel like I lost the contest. Like, you know, you try to steal a scene. And, like, uh-huh. he, he kept on stealing every scene. I was like, dang, he's just so freaking good at this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very weird about watching myself kind of thing. But, sure. Like, yeah. But that, honestly, that was, that was a blast. That was the first, like, film I'd done in, like, eight years. I did some theater in London for about a year or so, like, leading up to that. What'd so, you do? That was a, a show called Madame Melville. Yeah. Uh, did it in the West End for, like, you know, like, eight months or whatever. And then I did it in New York for no, you so like it in the theater still? Yeah. No, I love it. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, my forum, yeah. kind of thing. Do you uh, still do it? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Look, I, I don't really pursue acting. I haven't done, like, you know, like I, I just did Seth. He just directed a movie called Changeland. Yeah. Uh, 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 and uh, it was the first gig I had done in like 10 years, acting-wise. Really? Like, uh, besides, like, you know, a little, like, you know, like, commercial in the UK here and there, uh-huh. like a Japanese thing or uh-huh. something like that. <laughs> but, like, a real kind of acting gig. Like, yeah, like, I just don't pursue it. I don't really do it. Like, you know, I mean, I like it. I enjoy it. Well, how, what was the part in the Seth Green movie? <laughs> You're like, a, like this tour guide kind of dude. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, uh, um, yeah, I, pretty much I, I, I play like a, like almost like this drunkard, like tour boat captain kind yeah. of thing. It's, yeah. It was fun. Yeah. My preparation for it was watching, uh, Young Guns 1 and 2, uh, and watching Emilio Estevez and, uh, um, and uh, Arthur. I watched, I watched <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> so, How's that hold up? It's fantastic. I just showed it to my girlfriend like, like two, three days ago. And uh-huh. like, like, yeah, like, like we both wept when Gilgood dies. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. When, when Hobson uh, dies. Sure, like, like man. it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I grew up with that movie. Like that movie is actually like my first movie memory. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, yeah. And so I probably watched it three times this week. With that laugh, that goofy oh, laugh. Oh, just so Dudley good. Dudley Moore's goofy laugh. Oh, and like, Gilgood's so good. Isn't Liza, Liza Minnelli so in it? Yeah, yeah Liza yeah. Minnelli. She's so good in it. Like, give me a cop. Where's the <laughs> cop? Like, you know, what's your name, Chester? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really chase in the acting. You like doing it. You know, you, 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 You've got freedom to do what you want, obviously, and now you're going to do a podcast. But what, 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 and you're enjoying your life. But what do you want to do? I mean, honestly, like uh, you know, I I live well, I drink well, right? I smoke well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I that, I mean, that's kind of what I. So want. you're kind of okay. You yeah. know, uh, um, I I my life affords me the opportunities to also do other things, also. So like, I I can, I can paint and I can show. Yeah. You know, I don't have a hard time finding a show for that. You know, I yeah. I can do a parody pizza band. For a while, you what know, was and that? Go on tour. It was the Pizza Underground. Yeah. Do you know this? You know? Well, I, I I did a little reading on it. What was it exactly? Are you? Was it a genuine musician? Uh, uh, I mean, there were there were some, but no, not really. Do you sing or play an instrument? Uh, uh, I I played the maracas. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, um and yeah, it was Velvet Underground songs just done about pizza. That's really what it was. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, right, right. it's that straight. No, it's one of those things where it's. Velvet Underground parody band. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And it's one of those things where it's a joke and you laugh. Yeah. And then we keep on like repeating the same joke so it gets unfunny and it comes back around again. Uh-huh. And then it becomes hysterical. So it's a joke for a very small audience. Yeah, t- t- take a bite of the wild slice. Uh, you know, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. You know yeah. That's uh, not even a Velvet Underground song. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I know. It's a Lou Reed song. Lou Reed, and we have Lou Reed and we also do Nico solo kind of things too. We never found a John Cale song to cover, but. Oh, right. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, we were all actually genuine fans of the band. That was the whole thing. Yeah. Know? Like, yeah, so we do like all the pizza parties. You know, yeah, uh, you know, instead of uh, so, uh, wait, how I'll long be your mirrors, I'm Little Caesar. How about uh-huh. a, um, longer than it should have? Um, about a year and a half. Yeah. Honestly, it was a, it was a lark that we did. We did like an open mic thing, and then we did another thing, and then we recorded something in my living room, Max, Kansas City. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're with me on that. Yeah. And then uh, um, and then uh, uh, just put it online, and then kind of like forgot about it, kind of thing. My friend just put it on Bandcamp. Yeah. And then a month later, I woke up with like 40 calls and text messages, and I thought someone died. Uh, I really did. Like yeah. yeah. And like and then like all of them were like, "Are you in a?" pizza band kind of thing and it blew up and then we uh, like we got hired for like a show and we only had eight minutes of material it was like one eight minute medley that's yeah. all we had because you know yeah. you can't do a whole song this way sure yeah. and uh, uh so we went to like you know they booked us at this place uh babies all right and um uh, we met at the bar down the street and then when we turned the corner there and this is the dead of winter this is like zero degrees outside new york there's a line four people wide around the block and we're like 
whoa. What the fuck? Yeah, it yeah. was a very, you know, and it was, we kind of hit that hipster strike zone yeah. a little bit. You know what I mean? The, the, the Brooklyn hipsters freaking loved it kind of thing. And so then next thing you know, we expand our repertoire and we like did a couple of tours. We like toured like three countries, like that kind of thing. We did, did like, you, did, and what, how, why did it end? Just because I, honestly, because I was a little tired, <laughs> to be completely honest. Yeah, like, did you know, people like it out there? <clears throat> No, people like loved it. We we always sold well. Like yeah. uh, I mean, we always sold. Who else out was in the band? Uh, it was a uh, uh, Dina Vollmer, uh, Austin Killam, uh, 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 Matt Colburn, and uh, uh, Phoebe Kreutz. Uh-huh. And like yeah, and you know, there's a couple of people that are actually like legitimate musicians on it. Also, uh, Toby Goodshank kind of like joined us. You know, yeah. Uh, it really was like honestly, it was an out of tune guitar and like maracas and tambourines. Uh-huh. You know? And eventually, like you know, we had some keys to it. We had a yeah. bass kind of thing. Like we added some stuff to it. But at the same time, we were we were a joke parody. Band. I didn't want people walking away going that was a good show. I wanted people walking away and going I had a lot of fun. Right, that's what it was. And you do have do you have any serious music out music aspirations? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, I have some ideas for some things, but like nothing I like kind of kind of pursue. I, I I'm very casual about everything I pursue. So like you know, but at the yeah. same time now actually I actually have a great back catalog of just stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, sure. I, I have a couple of just like yeah, just art shows that are kind yeah. of just sitting around my apartment. Yeah. Know? Now I have a couple of books that are really just sitting around there and kind of collecting dust. That yeah. I just need the once over kind of thing. Yeah. But and that's the thing. I, I treat myself like a retired person. Everything I do is a hobby now. Yeah. You know, and you're the, okay with it. Yeah. You like it. Yeah. No, you feel like you've accomplished what you need to accomplish publicly. Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, like, I mean, like, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I never felt a need. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know. I mean, even when I was doing this stuff when I was a kid, I never felt the need to do that kind of thing. I mean, I just kind of just did it, and I was good at it. I did enjoy it for a long time, you know. But it was also kind of just, yeah. You, and, you feel full. Yes. No. Honestly, I, I I live a very rich, full, like silly life. You and, know, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. What's man. this podcast you're doing? Oh, so it's called uh, Bunny Ears. Uh, uh, it's with my buddy uh, Matt Cohen, and uh, yeah, it really is kind of it's. Conversational. Occasionally we have guests on, but that's kind of just, you know, here and there, kind of a smattering. Uh-huh. And it's kind of, I guess, maybe call it like a hybrid. But yeah, no, it's just, it's just a bunch of dudes. Like we, we, we have a really good, you know, repartee. And so it's one of those things where I just listened back to like, you know, like one of the two other episodes that we just did. I'm like, that's the kind of room I'd want to hang out in. Sure. It's that kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. just a bunch of dudes kind of like, yeah, just kind of just chatting. Where and, do you record it here? Uh, both here in LA and in, uh, um, and in uh, New York, not in uh, Paris. Not in Paris. Like, yeah, no, that that, that would be, start becoming too pricey. Uh, um, and yeah, we, no, and it's like, yeah, we kind of switch off every month, kind of thing. Who comes where? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So you're you're all good. There's nothing you you know you're you're not doing that you want to do. Yeah, exactly. And if I wanted to do it, I'd be doing it. You know. Yeah. So yeah, no. Do you I got, get asked to do parts? Yes. Yeah, I do. I I, I got approached a lot, yeah. kind of stuff. And I you know I I do give some of those the proper weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. And for the most part, I really, you know, I, like I said, I like the work. I, you know, I, I, I like, I, what I miss about, uh, acting is the summer camp quality. I mean, I love doing the work too. Yeah. Don't get me but also, right. I miss the summer camp. I was hanging out with people. I was hanging out with people and like, you know, oh, you for know, weeks. don't worry, we're going to stay in touch forever. Kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you never like, talk to yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, um, you know, I like that. I like the camaraderie yeah. and all that. Like, I, you know, that, 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 that's the part that I miss the most. Yeah. Like, I don't miss the work. I love the work and I think I'm good at it. Actually. Yeah. Like I think I've actually gotten better at it as you know as I age. You know, Did you like, ever train at all uh, for acting? Not not for acting. No, like, yeah. you know, kind of just it really was just it was charisma and timing. Yeah. Really was what it was. Like you know, yeah, like you know, yeah, you know, like, I, I know how it is. It's all you need, man. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, like, talent helps. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, like yeah, you know, but like I could, you know, but timing is also just like real timing and also comedic timing. Sure. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I always had good timing. You know? Yeah. All right, buddy. Timing. Well, See. Yeah, 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 right yeah, there. Close. yeah, you yeah. jumped it, but it's good. It's good. <laughs> good talking to you, man. Good talking to you too, man. You feel good about it? Uh, no, actually, erase the whole thing. Let's start over. Really? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. All right, talk to you later. All right, talk to you later, man. Thank you. See, he's doing all right, that Macaulay Culkin. He's all right, living in France, painting, doing whatever the fuck he wants. It's a not a bad gig. I said. He does have that new podcast called Bunny Ears. You can get that wherever you get podcasts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign out here because uh, I got it. They're they're sandblasting my house, and that's uh, it's just it's just the way it is today, folks. Just the way it is. Boomer lives. <laughs>